With the US presidential election on in November, major disruptions in the democratic race continue to occur as the world deals with the enormity of the coronavirus pandemic. Considered a front runner at the start of the democratic race, this week I spoke to former US presidential candidate Marianne Williamson. Marianne is an author, activist, spiritual advisor who discusses why she regrets leaving the race early and her thoughts on what the Trump administration should do to deal with the pandemic. Marianne, as the US deals with the, the highest number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the world, what is your advice to Americans in lockdown? Well, this is shocking to us on so many levels. It's not only shocking because of the numbers of deaths and people getting ill, but also it's a shock to our nervous system. It's a shock to our belief system. We are a very adrenaline-driven society. Americans are always on the move, uh, almost addictively so. And to tell us all of a sudden to just stop, stay home, um, it, is, uh, it, it is something that we, we aren't used to psychologically and emotionally as much as uh, we are also obviously not used to a situation where we know that we are at such physical risk, uh, possibly even for death. It's also, I think, a shock to us as Americans to have to recognize how ill-prepared our own government was, uh, how our government... Uh, uh, took such inadequate care at the beginning of this. So there's a lot that people are processing. You're saying I'm not Marianne for president anymore, but I'm still Marianne and it's still 2020. And this is arguably the most difficult challenge we're facing in the world. If you were up against Donald Trump, <clears throat> what would you be doing? What has he done wrong and what has he done right? The president didn't even take this uh, this seriously. American intelligence agencies were saying uh, back even before the end of last year uh, that they did not feel that the Chinese were being totally honest about the severity of the problem on their hands. The president was practically laughing it off. We've even found out that our own State Department had promised them some equipment uh, rather than uh, making sure that we would have enough if, in fact, this came to us. Even then, once the president uh, realized and was perhaps forced to realize by people around him that this was a very serious issue indeed, he failed to use what in the United States is called the Defense Production Act, which gives him the authority, should he choose, to actually direct all private industry to basically stop everything they're doing except the non-essentials in order to show up with the manufacturing that we need. We needed uh, personal protection gear manufactured. We needed ventilators manufactured, uh, respirators manufactured, ventilators manufactured, masks uh, manufactured. And he was so loath to tell private industry what to do, as though that's, it, it's this sophomoric notion of what socialism is, uh, that we lost very valuable weeks and people have died because of it and people will continue to die because of it. The American people really need to be very clear about how ill-served we were by our government in this crisis. Marianne, your message is love and power and to create a non-violent revolution. How can people do this in lockdown when they're feeling so powerless and, and doing whatever they can to survive? Well, let's not pretend that we're powerless, OK? You, you and I both come from countries where the average citizen is, in fact, not powerless. And we're not so much powerless as we have not been exercising our power. That's how we got to the situation that we're in in the United States. This, too, shall pass. Uh, this will be, this pandemic will be over. I know that will probably not be over nearly as soon as we would wish, because we wish it over to be not over tonight, but it will be over. And part of what we can do, you know, intellect is power. Uh, we have a lot to think about. A lot of people who have been distracted. Uh, this situation in the United States, and here I can only speak about my country, but it did not come out of nowhere. We have been withholding and withdrawing resources from public investment, the kinds of things that would have made us prepared for a moment like this. We've been, this has been an accumulated layer of diminished resources given to such investments as that. So a lot of the, of the power that we can exercise right now is thinking this stuff through, making sure that we understand, because as I'm sure you know, we have a presidential election uh, in November of this year. Uh, we will be electing congressmen. We will be electing senators. 
Uh, we just had a bailout um, a bill pass in Congress that more than anything bailed out our uh, Wall Street more than it bailed out uh, the average citizen of the United States. And we're not powerless. We have a lot to think about because when this thing is over, we're going to need to really get busy and really become politically active. How did it feel, Marianne, to have to end the campaign, especially as you were touted in the beginning as a front runner? <clears throat> I regret that I ended it when I did. I could have stayed in at least till November. I saw, um, no, I'm sorry, I take it back until New Hampshire. I could have made it through New Hampshire. I saw how corrupt our system is, but I also saw how wonderful our people are. Uh, we have some serious um, anti democratic forces uh, at work. Uh, within our political system. And I say anti-democratic in the sense that I think anything that obstructs the ability of the voter uh, to really hear all of the um, all of the candidates and deeply consider, you know, there was this rush to, quote, unquote, narrow the field. So what I experienced was that there are a lot of, uh, that there are forces that make it very, very hard for someone who's not already in the club uh, to make it in. And uh, they have a way of spitting you out when they want to. But what I also saw was that the American people are ready to handle this, would have been ready to handle the problem. This could have been uh, dealt with differently. So I, I got a front row seat. I, I have had uh, uh, I had a year in, in, in the belly of that beast. But it did not leave me cynical. It left me even more convinced on the importance of democracy. And uh, I will not be shutting up anytime soon. Uh, I was an inconvenient woman to the system as it is, and I, I hope to continue to be an inconvenient woman uh, to all the people who need to be inconvenienced. And you are an American author, a spiritual leader, a politician, an activist. You've written 13 books. I've read a number of them. Congratulations on all Thank of them you. and Thank everything you. that you've done. Anything else that you would like to say to our viewers this morning? I think that we are reminded by this uh, coronavirus pandemic of our common humanity, our common vulnerabilities, and our common fragility. Uh, the coronavirus does not respect national boundaries. The coronavirus does not make a distinction between an Australian or an American uh, or European or an African or an Asian. And I think uh, in this time of global pause, which all of us are being forced into, I think we are blessed with the opportunity to think more deeply about what it means to be human on this planet. And so I just say on behalf of so many people I know here, uh, uh, sending all our love and our best wishes, we're very aware that people in Australia and other countries are um, as vulnerable as we are. And uh, I hope you know also how grateful we are that you took such good care of Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson. <laughs> Marianne Williamson, thank you so much for coming on Weekend Edition. You. you stay well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. You as well.